Islam, everyone. I want to first begin by rising, giving praise to Allah, almighty, eternal, and incomprehensible, father of the universe, giving honors to the last prophet in these days and times, prophet, noble Drew Ali, savior of humanity, love made manifest so that men can comprehend. We want to give honors to the forerunner of the prophet, the honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey, purity made manifest. We extend honors to the Moore Science Temple of America, the Prophet Noble Drali strategy for, for obeying the Prophet's instruction and fulfilling his purpose. We want to give honors to the first Supreme Grand Advisor and Moderator of the Moore Science Temple of America, Brother Kirkman, Brother C. Kirkman Bay, the second, Brother F. Nelson Bay, and the third, Brother J. Blakely Bay. We want to give honors to the past Grand Sheik and advisor of the Moore Science Temple of America, Brother R. Love Ill, who served us for 30 years, over 30 years. I want to extend honors to the present Grand Sheik and moderator of the Moore Science Temple of America, Brother R. Jones Bay and his special staff. We extend honors to the Moore Science Temple of America Incorporated media team for providing the opportunity for this presentation. My name is Brother S. Anail Bay. I am the Grand Sheik of Branch Temple Number 11, located in Syracuse, New York. Praise Allah. This is a presentation on the Charter in honor of Charter Day for the Morris Science Temple of America. The Charter, the emblem of authority. You know, there's a lot that we can say about the Charter itself the actual document the actual paperwork and you know we can go into all kinds of 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 conversations about you know the the 10 wonders of the world the 10 emblems on the charter and how they could represent you know all this high science stuff like the 10 dimensions you know three dimensions of space six spatial dimensions and one dimension of time and all of that that's not what I'm here for. And that's not what we really want to talk about. What we really want to show is what the charter represents and give a basic foundational, but very crucial understanding from the best of our ability of what the charter is, its significance and its importance to the organization. Next slide, please. Praise the Lord. Prophet Noble Drali said, the more science symbol of America is a lawfully chartered and incorporated organization. Any subordinate temple that desires to receive a charter, the prophet has them to issue to every state throughout the United States, etc. There's a number of things that are said in this. This comes out of chapter 48 of the Holy Quran of the more science symbol of America. It says the more science symbol of America, which is singular, it's not speaking about subordinate temples in this state in, in, in that in that section or in that state. The Morris Science Temple of America is a lawfully chartered and incorporated organization, which means the Morris Science Symbol of America as an organization has a charter. It is chartered. This is important. Any subordinate temple, what do we mean by subordinate temple? Any temple with a number. That temple is a subordinate, is subordinate to the Morris Science Temple of America. Please forgive me, for, especially for those who are members of this movement. A lot of this will be academic to you. Please forgive me for preaching to the choir. Any subordinate temple that desires to receive a charter, the prophet has them to issue to every state throughout the United States, et cetera. Key points, number one, as I mentioned before, the organization itself is chartered under an incorporating authority. That means it gets, from the earthly perspective, a right to function from a superior authority, from the earthly perspective. Number two, the organization itself, by way of its own charter, is empowered to charter subordinate temples under it. We'll get to this in greater detail later. Next slide. What is a charter? A charter, simply put, is a right to function. In this case, it's a document granting certain specified rights, powers, privileges, or functions from the sovereign power of a state to an individual 
corporation, city, or other unit of local organization. Note, this is important, powers, privileges, functions, etc., granted by the charter are limited to the specific functions of the issuing authority. This is very, very important. The powers that are embodied by the charter cannot and do not exceed those of the issuing authority. Next slide. Prophet said, there is but one issue for them to be recognized by this government and the nations of the earth. And it comes only through the connection of the Moorish divine and national movement, which is incorporated in this government and recognized by all nations, all other nations of the world. This is important. Incorporation means the inclusion of something as part of a whole. That's very important, as we'll see in a minute. Number two, the process of constituting a company, city, or other organization as a legal corporation. Definition of a corporation, a company or group of people authorized to act as a single entity in laws called a legal person and recognized as such in law. Our prophet said in a memo in March 11th, 1929, when man fails after being placed head of the temple by the prophet of obeying our divine laws and constitutions, he is a traitor and enemy to the divine creed and unloyal to the national government USA to which this movement is to make men and women better citizens. That statement right there clearly underscores how the organization is incorporated into the government. In other words, the prophet designed the organization to move seamlessly with the United States government so that disobedience or transgressions in the government Oh, I'm sorry, in the organization, also and simultaneously equate to disloyalty in the country as a citizen. Next slide. Original incorporation is earthly authority of and for the organization, and thus is the charter. Number one. The organization, the Moorish Science Temple of America, initially under the name Moorish Temple of Science, was incorporated as a civic organization November 29, 1926. The name of the organization was changed from Moorish Temple of Science to the Moorish Science Temple of America in a special meeting in May of 1928. It is important to note that during this change of the name, the organization was still legally a civic organization. The organization itself was later changed in a special meeting from civic to religious with an affidavit to this effect filed with the county to note said change. There's a number of very important points here, people. The filing of the affidavit did not create a new organization. That's number one. Number two, the filing of the affidavit did not dissolve the original incorporation. The prophet used the word change. The organization was changed. There is a big difference between changing a singular organization and dissolving one and creating another. And all it takes to, 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 to verify what I'm saying is to go to the state of, to the website um, for the uh, Secretary of State, the state of Illinois, and look at the procedures for the dissolving of the corporation. And you'll, you'll realize that this never took place. Note, number one, the definition of civics. Civics means that part of political science that treats of the rights, duties, and responsibilities of citizens makes perfect sense that the mission statement, the original mission statement of the Moorish Temple of Science is to uplift fallen humanity and to teach those things that make better citizens out of men and women. It makes perfect sense. 
Number two, to quote the prophet, since the work of the Morris Science Symbol of America was largely religious, the organization has been legally changed to a religious corporation and an affidavit to this effect has been properly filed in the Cook County Recorder's office. In other words, people, Islamism recognizes a link between religious obligations and civic duty. We do not, we, we, we have not done with, the prophet did not do with Islamism what the European West did with religion. And that is what? They secularized religion, turned religion into a hobby, something you do as opposed to something you live. Number three, this is a very important point, people. No state, let me repeat, no state, and that includes the state of Illinois, County of Cook, no state is capable of creating an entity superior to itself. The states are not independent nations. There is no way that incorporating under the laws of the state of Illinois can create an independent or semi-dependent nation. It's not how it's done. It, it can't even create another state. The Morris Science Symbol of America is not another state or separate state as some people erroneously believe. States are admitted to the union via Congress, not incorporated under a state. Next slide. The term subcharter is very significant. Number one, all charters or contracts for the use of a vessel or organization that are subordinate to a charter. Number two, charters issued by an authority whose authority is itself granted by a charter. This is literally a definition or an explanation of chapter 48, instruction four of the Holy Quran of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Moorish Science Temple of America is a lawfully chartered and incorporated organization, meaning it itself derives earthly authority from an earthly source, in this case, the state of Illinois. And it says, any subordinate temple that desires a charter, the prophet has them, et cetera. That is the second part. Charters issued by an authority whose authority is itself granted by a charter. So that means the organization itself, the more science symbol of America, has the power to issue charters to, to temples subordinate to it. This statement invokes the, or this statement, the prophet said, let's talk about this for a second, spiritual authority, because this is a divine organization. The Morris Science Symbol of America, deriving its power and authority from the great Quran of Muhammad. This statement invokes the constitutionally protected right to freedom of religion. Why the pro one of the reasons why the prophet said that the Constitution of the United States is one of the greatest documents ever written. Said freedom of religion, and this is important, said freedom of religion exists and works in harmony with the civil and civic authority and does not supersede it. Again, very important. The fact that this is a religious organization does not make it immune to the civil authority. Next slide. Authority and power of the charter to subordinate temples. Very important. Now we're talking about what the charter or, 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 or the powers that the charter represents to subordinate temples. Vested with all the powers and privileges of a subordinate temple within the jurisdiction of the home office. This is wording on the charter. Within the jurisdiction of the home office jurisdiction, a foresaid by virtue of whose authority it exists, while acting in conformity with the laws, rules, and regulations of the home temple and the subordinate temple aforesaid, being duly and lawfully organized, constituted, and established, 
is hereby authorized and empowered to initiate and confer degrees of said temple in accordance with the established forms and usages upon all such persons as are duly and lawfully qualified to promote and practice the teachings of all the true and divine prophets, Jesus, Mohammed, Buddha, Confucius, etc. This topic alone deserves a whole presentation all by itself. There's a number of ways it can be looked at. A number of ways it can be looked at. Some will look at it from the purely administrative perspective. If you look down at the bottom of the, of the, uh, the slide, on the left, the column on the left, that is from the administrative perspective. You have lay members, you have sheiks, you have divine ministers. From the personal development perspective, you have belief, you have faith, you have fruition from what some would call the higher science or the grand scheme for all of humanity. You have the chemistry of mortal life, the ministry of death, and the mystery of deific life. Our organization is extremely comprehensive, extremely. If we go by and stick to and confirm ourselves to the prophet's literature. We don't have to join multiple organizations for the secrets that are in multiple religious and multiple secret organizations. Why? Because those secrets are revealed in the plainness of language in the prophet's literature. Hence, to promote and practice the teachings of all true and divine prophets, Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, Confucius, etc. Next slide. Conclusion. Again, this is very short. The power of the charter is vested in the power and the utilization of the organization. To paraphrase our prophet, Noble Drew Ali, he spoke about suffering due to misunderstanding of where the power is and where the power lies. The power is not in the piece of paper. The power is in the principles that the piece of paper represents. The power of the organization is in the knowing and the active embodiment of its purpose. To simply put, the power comes from a comes from an absence of members standing around on their meeting period. What is that, people? To make our people better citizens. The organization teaches us how government actually runs, meaning by participation, active participation in the organization. We are actively we're learning on the in an on the job training type of format how to participate in civic affairs. Being a citizen is a duty that brings privileges. It's a duty, being a citizen is a duty. And not just a duty, our prophet said, a sacred one, praise the law. It prepares us for government leadership. When the prophet said to be recognized by the government in which we live, what do we mean by that? This is a republic, meaning representative government, meaning the people govern by way of their elected representatives. If you are not participating, like the prophet had the Muslims do in the election year of 1928, if you're not participating, you are not fulfilling your civic duty. And from a religious perspective, you are not practicing charity because that begins in the home. Praise Allah. Government is for the people, by the people. That's where we live. This is the government in which we live. If we are not being, if government is management, and in our type of government, the Republican form of government, the people have the power by way of their elected representatives. If they are not managing or overseeing the management, 
your resources still get managed. You just don't have a say in how. Lastly, it empowers us in this critical time to redefine Americanism. Let me say this. Amer <laughs> We've grown up under the European psychology. And it's been pervasive to the point where it's easy for the ignorant. Let me repeat that. It is easy for the ignorant to see Eurocentrism as a proxy for Americanism. And it was never that way to begin with. It wasn't that way to begin with. White supremacy, Eurocentrism usurped the American dream. It usurped it. We can prove it very easily. Um, the prophet said, nationality is the order of the day. The American ideal, in other words, the constitutional standard that we all must meet to answer up to and, and answer up to is this. In the new era of time, the new world, you have to adopt an ideal to, to qualify socially. It's a social qualification, not a legal qualification. It's social to socially qualify or to answer up to the constitutional standard, you have to say where you're from. Why? Because in the new world, you have to adopt the idea that one nation can be formed by people from many other old world nations. So the prerequisite is you have to be able to say what nation you came from. If not, you do not meet the social standard. And that's more powerful than the legal implications. Why? Because when people come together in this society to shape the laws, they're already socialized against the Negro. See? That's how that works. And that's very powerful because from a higher perspective, from a spiritual perspective, the United States is the great cauldron for the new man. The new man. The new man. The presumption is that the new man was produced in a social perspective with American citizenship. This country is only 200 some odd years old, people. How old is our flag? Our flag is over 10,000 years old. There's countries on this planet right now that have pottery shards older than this country. So 200 years is that much time. I submit personally that we are still in the process. We are dealing with an alchemical process of transmuting something old and crude socially speaking, economically speaking, morally speaking, spiritually speaking, into the new man. I submit we haven't seen the true American yet and that we will through the Asiatics. And the Asiatics will fulfill that through the prophet's teachings and the prophet's instructions. Hence, it's very few Americans to this day that can tell you what truly constitutes Americanism. Our prophet taught us that every American has two flags, flag of birth, flag of their origin or ancestry. There is no room in there for black or white. Last, I'll, I'll finish with the prophet saying, the time has come when every nation must worship under its own vine and fig tree every tongue must confess his own. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for, <laughs> um, thank you so much for listening. I'm going to see if I can look. Um, moderators, I do not, I am not able to see any of the comments. Could you um, print the comment um, in the chat or any other questions for me. Ah, okay. I agree. There's Brother Barnes Bay. 
Islam, dear brother. I agree, but we must be able to cast that ballot under our free national name as Moorish American, not African American, Black, or Negro. We must advocate for our nationality properly classified in the database. It's our civic duty to advocate for this recognition. Praise the Lord, brother. Let's let's talk about that. Um, we must be able to uh, um exercise or cast free national ballot on our free national name. Let's talk about what the free national ballot actually is. Right? Let's talk about it. The free, the prophet called it a free national ballot. What we would call it today is, I'll give an example really quick. There's something called the Irish vote block. The Irish vote block. In other words, it's a critical mass of citizens, American citizens, that vote according to Irish issues. Why? Because they're Irish. See how that works? Regardless of party politics, the prophet wrote an article or, or, or had an article published in the Moorish God newspaper called um, Political Slavery. And he spoke to the two different types of political slavery, one of them being beholden to the whims of a particular political party, even when the aims and objectives of the party do not address the will of the people. So a free national ballot sees what? The will of that particular group of citizens first. So in that respect, again, under the free national ballot, yes. Under our free national name, yes. Why? The implication of free national name means that there's principles that come with it. There's a, there's a common American experience that comes with it. There's a common culture that comes with it. And th with those things, there's common issues that come with it. And we vote our issues. Praise the Lord. Thank you for that, dear brother. Praise the Lord. Thank you, dear brother T. Hopkins Bay. Can someone print? It's all right here. The prophet didn't miss a thing. He didn't miss a thing. For those that are under the false belief or the erroneous belief that um, the Morris Science Temple of America is somehow separate from the United States government, the fact, see, it's one thing we can, we can argue about what the prophet wrote and what he said. Can't argue about with, with, with what he did. And there's no argument there. The prophet had over 3,000 Muslims and members voting at the national, state, and local levels. This is recorded history. If we're to be a separate organ, if he intended for us to be a separate organization or a separate nation from the United States, why are we participating in another nation's political affairs? And why would it even be allowed? See? We can't argue with what he did. Our free national name is American. We cast our vote as American citizens in the interests of Moorish Americans. Praise the law. I agree. Praise the law. We are American citizens. Our prophet taught us we're American citizens. Every American citizen has an old world connection. That is their social contribution to the American experience. The problem with our people isn't residuals from slavery. It is identity crisis. We were separated from our past. We were separated from our past and thus impaired on making the proper contribution to American society, which is why we suffer in 2022, hundreds of years after slavery. Every nation, the prophet taught us, every nation suffered slavery. Well, what's the problem with us? The problem with us is not slavery. The problem with us is identity crisis. And the, and the lack of knowledge of our identity and history and culture prevent us from being viewed and recognized in American society as a contributor to the American experience. What are we recognized as in 2022? As descendants of products of American commerce. There's no honor in that. Does state have any other meanings besides states of the union? Um, it all depends on context, dear brother. It all depends on context. 
So if we're talking about a state and international law, yes. Yes. But the 50 states are not states in international law. And the Morris Science Symbol of America is a lawfully chartered and incorporated organization. Incorporated where? Incorporated in the state of Illinois. And like I mentioned earlier, no state has the power to create an entity greater than itself. Islam, can you speak to the importance of advocating for us to be classified in the databases of Moorish Americans? Great question, dear brother, because we are Moorish American citizens as Moorish American, not African American or black. How important is this and how are we moving to correct this? Great question. All right. I think we have to be, you know, the prophet said it is an intelligent movement and we must represent it with the highest of intelligence. That means before we move, you know, how, how, how our brothers in another organization say you measure twice and cut once. Measure twice, cut once. So that being said, and based on, I'm a member, some of you may know, may, may not know, I'm a member of a Moorish American think tank and research team called Ali's Men. And our research has shown that this classification that we're talking about in the data stems from the, um, uh, um, it stems from the yeah, OMB the federal government's Office of Management and Budget. That's where it stems from, that's the office. The Office of Management and Budget with a particular document called Federal Directive 15. Federal Directive, and, I'm, and again, that is the topic of another show. Federal Directive 15 is based on faulty sociology. Let me repeat that. The whole idea of calling people by colors and not identifying them by national origin is faulty sociology. It's bad sociology, people. That's what it is. Whether you want to call yourself white, black, pink, purple, polka dots, it's bad sociology because that is not the proper way to identify people. You see, it's not. Federal Directive 15 sets the standard for racial classification in America for the purpose of statistics and statistics gathering. So that's your target. Federal Directive 15 from the Office of Management and Budget at the federal level. You must address it at that level. And how do you address it at that level? The, 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 the means by which you address it is civic and political, not legal. No affidavits are gonna do anything. Let me repeat that. No affidavits filed anywhere are going to do anything with Federal Directive 15, people. It's not. You have to do the same thing. The prophet, prophet gave us the example. First thing he did, he said, we organized as the Moorish Temple of Science, 1925, and then incorporated. See that? So you organize first, then you build your strength, and then you politicize. You aim that power. That's a free national ballot. That's a free national ballot. You aim that power to get these issues addressed at the highest level, and then it trickles down. But it can't be done individuals. It can't be done by individuals. It's done by a movement. Islam, Muslims, but a Willie Moorhead Bay the Third. Since there's a movement for reparations for the American Negro, are the Moorish Americans, according to how our prophet tied us in the government, are the Moorish Americans entitled to such a reparation? The prophet Noble Drali is reported to have said that the Europeans got to pay us off and pay us with compound interest. We are not anti-reparation at all but it's important to know it's important that we have and i'm not trying to to minimize the issue by saying this or 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 sim oversimplify it but it's important that the name on the check is right it's important that the name on the check is right see we know according to act six of divine constitution and bylaws about slavery in the united states from 1779 to 1863 Right? Okay. Or 1865. Okay. But we know that the institution of slavery, follow me, people. And again, this is also another topic that deserves its own show or own presentation. Follow me. The issue of slavery regarding our people did not begin as commerce. It didn't begin as commerce. See, the prophet gave us the breadcrumbs or gave us how to think. Our literature and the instructions in our literature are psychology. It's showing us how to think, not so much as what to think about. 
how to think about whatever we think about. So he gave us the how. Now we direct it at the what. When you do that, you realize that slavery, as related to our people, was did not begin as commerce. It began as war. We lost a war, people. That's what it began. And who was the war against? Against the Christian powers. What created it? The, 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 the condition that, be, that became slavery for our people, the tra African transatlantic slave trade, was a papal bull issued in 1442 by the name of Ilias Q.A. Pro Divini, issued by Pope Eugene IV in 1442 that authorized the Portuguese Order of Mary and Christ to begin raids on the west coast of Africa. And in that papal bull, it literally says, this is a new crusade against the Moors. Now that you know this people, there should be absolutely no question about question 14 in the Quran questionnaire. Why are we Moorish Americans? Because we're descendants of Moroccans born in America. The very beginnings of the transatlantic slave trade were aimed at the Moors, period. See? So, and there was a series of other papal bulls to finish answering your question, brother. There was a series of other papal bulls, right? That together form what we call doctrine of discovery. Doctrine of discovery was to benefit the Christian nations. Pause. In that time period, the socialization of the terms Muslim and Christian were identity, not hobby like they are today. What church you go to or what mosque you go to. No, it was identity. If you look up the term today, Christian identity, if you Google it right now, you'll see it's synonymous with white supremacy. This is why today the alternative right, no matter how many uh, moral transgressions the man commits, they still call Donald Trump a good Christian. And no matter how many churches he belongs to, they still call Barack Obama a Muslim or Muslim. See, they're still playing by those same old world rules. So doctrine of discovery covered Christian nations, which is why it was Spain and Portugal first. Then the Dutch and the French. Then the English. And then later in 1793, Thomas Jefferson declares doctrine of discovery to be international law. Why? Because the United States is not founded on a Christian religion. So by declaring it international law, now the United States could use doctrine of discovery. And to date, the last time it was used by the United States was in a land claim against the Oneida Nation in 2005, right here in Syracuse, New York. Our prophet was something else. So to, to, to sum up the, my response about reparations, you ever heard of residual income? There's multiple nations and multiple entities that owe the check, not just the United States. And the Western African diaspora today, right, is literally the direct result of and the, 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 the progeny of the African diasporic entity called the Moroccan Empire. An empire is multinational, multi-tribal. So under the, unif the unifying term Moorish American, all of the Asiatics of African descent or it, of African descent in the West qualify. Not like, unlike ADOS, where it separates in segments. Praise Allah, Brother Porter Ill. So basically we are in a second war, but it's political as opposed to being physical. It's an ideological war, brother. Another member of another organization, Honorable Elijah Muhammad called it the war in heaven, right here. It's an ideological war. The prophet in the Moorish Guy newspaper said that our own newspaper, our own media is our greatest weapon. Why? Because we control the narrative on our own media. That's why we get to tell our story our own way. The old timers and the elders, praise the law for the elders for keeping the doors open for us. 
and allowing us to stand on their shoulders. But the old timers are, are you know, the elders are, are fond of saying the prophet is right and the world is wrong. Why? Because the world says, to, to use the language in the book of Revelations, a lamb that looked as if it had been slain since the foundation of the earth. In other words, all we know about this one is that it's dead. All we know is that it's dead. It's all it's, it's all it's ever been. Black, according to science, means, see how that works? All we know about these people is that they're the dead people. That's it. The prophet said, no, 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 no. That's not them. That's a condition that they went through. But every other nation did too. See? The prophet is right and the world is wrong. What you have on the scene right now, and again, to, 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 to refer to something I Elijah Muhammad said. He said, the two gods on the scene. The prophet broke the seal on, on, the, on the mystical language he used, though. The prophet said, man's ideal is his God. The two ideals on the scene about you and I. That's what we're dealing with. Two ideas. The world says you're this. The prophet said you're that. And that's Allah's prophet. Who's right? That is the war we are in. It's an ideological war that definitely has physical consequences. And it, since it's an ideological war, people, guess what? Filing paperwork ain't going to put a dent in the matter. It's not going to do nothing. Proclaiming nationality, what are you proclaiming? Nationality is a quality and character. You got to live the quality and character. See? You got to live that. The prophet said, you know, that he desires that we return to our forefathers thinking. But minus the things that caused us to fall, which is why so much emphasis is placed on acting right and treating us each other correctly because that's how we fell. See, we need seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, treat each other right. Only then can all this high science and knowledge do us any good. See, we took a 500 year whooping from Allah himself. The fact that our prophet came meant that the whooping is over or should be. We need to act like it. You know how it is when back in those of you that had corporal punishment from your parents, when the board of education was applied to the seat of learning, you found some act right real quick. We need to act like we found our act right or else the worst is yet to come. See? Praise the law. Any other questions? None? Praise Allah. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all for um, indulging me. And um, happy charter day, Brother Portio. Money doesn't make the man as free national standards. Brother, that's a fact. That's a fact. Free national standards and power. He didn't say free national standards and rights. See, <laughs> he said free national standards and power. Islam, next question. This is my next, that's my next question. According to the charter, according to the purpose of this movement, have we dropped the ball since the day of the prophet? Very good question. Um, only, and, and I submit this, dear brother, in terms of have we dropped the ball? I think our the, the mirror, <laughs> let me repeat that. I think the mirror is the only thing that can answer that question, brother. I think the mirror answers that question. Why do I say that? Prophet Noble Jurali said, Allah alone guides the destiny of this divine movement. You know what that means? That means where we have, where we see the movement today is exactly where Allah wants it. So what do we really have to question? We got to question our own vision. If we think the movement isn't going where it's supposed to go, we got to question our own vision. Because either Allah is wrong or Allah went to sleep on the job or we don't quite know what we're looking at. Are you saying that we should stay stateless, <laughs> but be Moorish conscious? Well, first of all, you have to divine stateless. Stateless means not belonging to a nation. So our prophet said, 
that this organization was de was 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 dedicated to making our people better citizens. What's the presumption there? The presumption is that we're citizens. So if we're citizens, we're not stateless. And if the prophet had 3,000 Muslims voting long before there was a Voting Rights Act in 1965, that tells you we're citizens, brother. A stateless person is a person with that that that's not a citizen. That's the simplest way I can put it. Peace. That lack of identity came from the enslavement process we're still under. Yes, sir. Agreed. But slavery got scientific, right? It got much more scientific. It was physical. Now it's mental, like the prophet said. Islam, does our charter place us within Herd's revised statutes? Herd's revised statutes, dear brother, is a guideline for um, religious organizations, for religious corporations. That's all it is. It's a guideline, and it says, and you know, and it speaks to religious corporations that wish to incorporate a particular way or make certain things. Really, what it is make certain things known. Here's the fact: counties are subdivisions of states. Counties do not have incorporating authority. Let me repeat that. Counties don't have incorporating authority. States do. See? That's important to understand. Any other questions? Again, I want to say this too. We're instructed, praise the law, we're instructed by the prophet. It says, communicate it to the ignorant for their instruction, communicate it to the wise for thine own improvement. I am not presenting myself here today as being the end-all be-all on this topic. I am doing exactly that, presenting it to the ignorant for their instruction, presenting it to the wise for my own improvement. I, you know, I, I, I pray sincerely that this presentation sparks more dialogue on the topic. As we say in the organization, every round goes higher and higher. Praise the law. Any other questions? Praise the law. Thank you, dear brother. Thank you, dear brother. You know, to Allah be the praise. I can only take credit for the mistakes. Praise the law. Thank you, dear brother. I'm seeing some of the comments. Some of them I'm not seeing. Uh, some of the questions I'm not seeing. But as long or thanks for sharing this knowledge. Praise the law. Again, we're, you know, so many of us, thank you, dear brother Alan Neal, so many of us are caught up still on appearances, on the illusions. The paperwork is an illusion. See, it's a manifest. It's a manifest. It's the knowing of its use. That's where the power is. Our organization is a service organization uplift fallen humanity. You want to get powerful, serve. See? And more importantly, nationality is a group dynamic. What does that mean? Well, what, what, where am I going with that? I benefit as an individual by, listen, sacrificing a portion of my individuality in favor of the collective. That's called submission. That's what that's called, submission. See, I benefit as an individual by contributing to the collective, not by manipulating the collective to shine the light on me. I benefit as an individual by contributing to the collective. That's nationality. That's nationality. As the young people say, you stay G'd up. That's nationality. Any other questions? It's not very informative. Now I know where Christianity and slavery tie together. <laughs> Praise the law. Brother, <laughs> I, I mean, wow. There, there's so much history 
that informs or that or that or that rewards us for following the instructions that the prophet noble drew ali gave for following those instructions there's so much rich history and then when that history is known now we embody it that's the creation of culture like the prophet said in chapter 47 each subordinate temple form under the covenant of love truth peace freedom and justice and create its own laws and customs in conjunction with that of the grand major temple it's like what you know praise the law for the work of uh subordinate temple number 11. they put in decades of work every year no uh, um october 14th every october 14th to honor the day that the moors lost nationality at carpenter's hall to the point now where the city of Philadelphia recognizes Moorish American Remembrance Day as an official holiday for the city of Philadelphia. Praise Allah for that. Islam is there a legitimization crisis in the Moorish American Islamic and national movement? Islam, absolutely. Of course there is. In my humble opinion, it's because of our lack of, or our lack of living the life. What I the example I just mentioned regarding subordinate temple number 11 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, is a great example of this. They've lived the life, whether it was raining, whether they had to work, they took that day off and they did that march. Now, hundreds of Muslims convene on downtown Philadelphia every year, and the city recognizes it. Notice I said the city recognizes it. Recognition is not, recognition is the response to an assertive act, an active demonstration, not a passive one. Meaning the Muslims didn't beg or didn't ask or didn't go with hat in hand to the city of Philadelphia and say, please, please recognize us. No, they did their thing and the city recognized them. So what do the Moabs mean by original charter? I, I'm not sure, dear brother. They could be, you know, in my presentation, I mentioned the charter for the Moorish Science Temple of America. In other words, from the earthly perspective, what document empowers the organization to exist? During the time of unrest, what some people call the controversial years in Islam. We're talking around 1929 after the prophet's passing through around 1936, around that time period. You had a move, you had, especially it was published in some of the newspapers of the day to revoke the charter of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Who had the power to do that? The Secretary of State, because that's where it was issued. See? Secretary of State. Now, of course, there's a spiritual authority. The spiritual authority, as, as mentioned on the back of the questionnaire, the power and authority comes from the great Quran of Muhammad. I'd like to speak to that very briefly, right? During the life of Prophet Muhammad, first of all, the word Quran does not mean book. The book word book is Al-Kitab. So Quran meaning what was revealed the revelation, in that revelation, there's no doubt. What was revealed to Prophet Muhammad, the faith, we're told that we're to propagate the faith. Who was the faith of Prophet Muhammad? In all of Islam, you know, Prophet Muhammad, the relationship between Allah and Prophet Muhammad by way of the angel Jibril was as a man speaks to his friend. Right? So, the revelation, what was revealed to Prophet Muhammad is the Quran. The faith of Prophet Muhammad is what? Allah and man are one. Right? The, you know, the, 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 the surety of Allah, of, 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 of the omnipotence of Allah and man, the certainty that man will reach deific life. Will, meaning we got work to do. See? 
That is where the power and authority from the spiritual perspective derives. What was revealed to Prophet Muhammad? Prophet Muhammad was the walking Quran. Praise the Lord. Any other questions? Beautiful. Thank you. We are at 55 minutes into the presentation. I would like to close out. Again, thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. Um, and happy Charter Day. Peace.